mostly like aggression and simmering resentment. I would say. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, <laughs> no, it's been it's been great. I mean, you know, we we get on great, and we really sort of get get each other's what we try to do and how we do it, and uh, you know, so it's a good it's a really good partnership. As an actor, I'm like, I've never felt more confident or happy ever, like reading scripts and delivering dialogue. I just get excited to read Tony's work and I always trust and believe in it. She will not beat me because, well, I'm me. I was born to be emperor, chosen by God. And is God ever wrong? Archie, is God ever wrong? Never, emperor. He is the sun blinding us with truth. I don't know what that means, but seems to agree with me. He's got an incredible vo vocabulary, and I think it's a really important part of the show that really does combine, yeah, like really low profanity and sort of absurdist humour and, and also like incredibly savvy moments. I'm doing things, aren't improving, indulging my whims, violin lessons, philosophy with Voltaire, and learning Kung Fu, an Eastern fighting art I have long wandered on and seems I have a natural proclivity for. So, yeah, I think he's just like a really mercurial character. And I think that's reflected in the language and the ability to kind of reel it out, you know. And I think that's where I was very lucky, where I kind of got to experience um, working on The Favourite and how, and how the dialogue on that was delivered. Emperor, uh, Emperor if, if, if I could just talk about a plan for the next few days. Of course you may, Svenska. As long as you don't expect me to listen. Sir, Grigor, listen to Svenska and nod occasionally as if you give a fuck on my behalf. It's just our new situation needs to be assessed and... <laughs> just enjoy the party, Svenska. You've become quite the warrior. It is dull and makes me want to punch you when I see you about to speak. It's just that... <clears throat> he warned you. Just tell me. It moves at such a pace that the laugh has happened and you're still on to the next one and the characters are kind of always one step ahead of you but also swerving and changing directions all the time you need to give in we need to stop this bloodshed see that's the difference between us i don't mind the bloodshed i mean you honestly can't think you can run russia without bloodshed i can i will you're so sweet sometimes i could just kiss you on the nose ah! oh sorry did that hurt yes Let's face it, your heart wasn't in it anyway. We don't want to kill each other. Fervently disagree. You know, there can be a serious moment of like, this is actually the point of what I'm saying, but then the character is distracted by, like you say, like a dream about an otter that was sounding kind of completely irrelevant and then back to something else. And so as an audience member, you're watching kind of kind of this this strange map and trajectory through the mind of, of Peter, which is really fun to um, unpack as an actor because it's kind of, you get to play so many different levels within within something. You must make her love you. She does love me. She killed Leo and she kept me. Evidence in. I fear she's only dimly aware of the fact of her love. This is my plan, aunt. She will soon realize Russia is an old sow of a country that lays near dead and heaving in a pile of mud, impossible to move, and she has failed. She will come to me humbled, sad, and in need of my love and massive cock. Marvelous plan. I know. I have a lot of fun writing it. And the pace is a really like a thing that we all discovered in first season um, of the, just the, when they're on and they're fast and it's quick, it's really kind of exhilarating. All of our cast are so incredible, particularly, I mean, the two scenes we've chosen are both with Elle and uh, Elle and I love doing scenes opposite each other so much because it is, I think we have a similar mentality and approach to work, but also like we have fun kind of, sparring as the characters and as actors within those scenes. Could you kill it? What, the crocodile? Yes, if it is just gone, disappeared from court, the idea disappears too. Well, who kills better than me? Exactly my thought. And the irony of suddenly wanting that talent? Swallowed whole for expedience. <laughs> and particularly like with season two as well as her character develops into a kind of this, uh, you know, slightly more monstrous version of Catherine at times where she is demanding and angry and stuff. It was really fun to play Peter opposite that side of Elle and, 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 and the comedy she found within that. Know this, your guards will have orders to kill you at their whim, fillet you alive, boil your organs and force feed you them unseasoned. If you step out of line once, once, not twice, once. Unseasoned, barbaric, good for you. 
Show's promise. Maybe you can do this. All right. Something that was really beautiful about season two was this, this idea of parent relationships, both Peter and Catherine becoming parents together, but also Catherine's mum coming to court and, and how that then changed Catherine and how she behaved around everyone. But then also Peter confronting his father about kind of what he was born into and this this weight that he's been carrying around with him and what he's expected to be. Ultimately, it doesn't all come together until that kind of moment at the wedding where he suddenly realizes how much he's messed up and, and is actually lays it all bare emotionally, what, you know, what he's a, apologetic for and, and his shortcomings. And that's kind of him becoming a man, I guess, some, somewhat and being able to to recognize all those things and, and sincerely apologize from a character who I guess you would never imagine that possible. It's very public and it's the rawest they've ever been with each other. I mean, I think there was an element of um, that I've in the research or whatever was like they had to do a lot of things publicly. So I kind of love the publicness of it. It just adds the scale and that everything they do personally is also political. Um, so it gave that aspect to it as well. For Peter, I feel like throughout a lot of season one and two, everything public is very performative. And it's very much like if he makes a joke, then everyone has to laugh. And it's a lot about saving face. So suddenly to have to be that, I don't think in that moment, I don't think he was thinking about the fact that it was public. I think it was just raw and honest, but at the same time, that's something that you'd never really normally see from that character. I picked the scene in six um, because I just remember had a, having a lot of fun doing that scene. I just thought it was it, emotionally, it was a really interesting point from where Peter's at, where he's really trying to connect to Catherine and he's kind of tired of where things are at and he's trying to understand where the relationship's going. Um, I thought Elle's performance in it was really funny. And there was one other scene that I thought about choosing, which is when when Peter has planned to take back the throne and the, the coup begins and he and he goes to goes to Catherine to take it back. And when he walks into the, the chamber, um she's um kind of overwhelmed with emotion and upset by everything that's happened in her reign so far and is is crying. And it's a moment where suddenly Peter kind of gives up on what he wants because he sees her in that state. And that was the other scene I was going to choose because I was like, oh, that that was such a big turning point character wise, I felt for him to suddenly be able to see her in pain and, and recognise it as opposed to what that character normally would do. We'd seen their relationship develop so much that it felt like even though it had turned back and he sort of was like, I hate her now, before that, there'd been throughout the season all these little moments between them where you felt like they were getting closer and closer and he was seeing something in her that it felt like he didn't realise how close he'd become until that moment in a way and it was seeing her sort of break down and her losing this thing she valued so much that in a way he valued it, but sort of probably like knows on some level he doesn't value it the way she does, you know, like he wants her to forgive him. That's his first thing. But there's also the, the other aspect of him, which he knows is like he's hung around in a kill or be killed situation in a way. So I think there's an element of like, I don't really know what I'm going to do, which is what he says to Gregor, you know, it's like, and then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it he's sort of aware of his mercurialness in certain moments, you know, that he has a proclivity to violence. He has an ability and, you know, a real talent for violence in a way. Um, and for those moments. So I think that's what's kind of nice about the tension in the scene. I think Elle and I both describe it a little bit like acting a little bit like being athletes somewhat, where it's kind of like you end up at the Olympics and it's like that's when you've got to kind of do your best work and so there's like this you spend seven months eight months shooting a season and then you there's this climax and this this long scene as you say of of the wedding of the both of them kind of reaching the the the, the peak of everything that it's been leading up to this moment and their relationship and and it's kind of there's kind of a fun I think within that as a performer where you're kind of like this is it's it's a little bit do or die from a writing perspective on the scene yeah it was it is that it's like okay, it's all, it's all coming down to this. I know they've had this big journey. They're both landing together opposite each other in a life and death moment, also right at the climax of both their personal stories. What I was writing was kind of about a guy being challenged for the first time and kind of liking it, you know. And so I felt natural that he'd fall in love with her and you know, in the way any young couple do, it's like, oh, I'll try and be a bit better and then she'll like me more. I'll be more like she wants me to be. And that became a struggle in itself. I was just going to jump in on that for a second as well. I've forgotten what the question was to reiterate that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>